where my sister Ujiope, I'm addicted to your to your program. What trendy with Oji? And um, yeah, but I disagree with you today. Thirty first of January, twenty twenty three. Here in Washington State, right now, the time is uh, nine. A group of Yoruba Nation activists seeking self-determination for the Yoruba-speaking state in Nigeria took to the streets in Ondo State, re-echoing calls for secession from Nigeria. Armed with placards bearing varying inscriptions, the protesters called for the emancipation of the Yoruba Nation in the wake of the ongoing economic hardship and rising cost of living. <laughs> Rising cost of living. I mean, this is what we're seeing now. I, I was just asking you if Sunday Boho is back, yeah, and yeah. he's still in Germany at this. But I disagree with you today. Thirty first of January, twenty twenty three. Here in Washington State, right now, the time is uh, nine fifty two a.m. in the morning. You know why I disagree with you? You said secessionist that people that advocate for their freedom in Yoruba land, they are secessionists. No, I disagree with you totally. You know, <clears throat> we have right to self-determination, okay? We are not a secessionist. No, we are not. We have the right to rule our land, right? And before now, Yoruba land. What we are advocating for is this. It's simple. It has nothing to do with to secede from Nigeria. No, we are not a secessionist. Please correct that next time, my sister. Our culture is going down the rail. It's diminished. They took out the syllabus of our history out of school. Intentional. I repeat, it's an intentional. It's not by mistake. Three, whom we are as a Yoruba is nowhere to be found no more. And our land, our heritage is going down the road. And go and do your findings. We Yoruba, we Yoruba, go and do your friendies, my sister. So please, those guys that are going out there, we give them our full support to let the Nigerian government of the day to understand that we are no secessionists. We are asking for self-determination. And it allowed self-determination to govern ourselves, to govern about our culture, to govern about our language, and to govern about our land and the insecurity in the land. Guess what, my sister Ojo? But well, do you know that right now, when I was growing, I'll be able to go by this time of dry season. I will go to where uh, there is a, a swamp water and I can, I can farm in there. But these days, there's no way to do that. If, you know, it is, this is not just uh, farming has been, inflation has been on and on and on. Even here in America, there is an inflation. But there is, will be a way to subsidize when we go to farm, we farm. Then there's not gonna be fear that someone will kill me. But look at what the Fulani guys are doing. Even our mother, our fathers, they were raping them, they were killing them. See what the way they killed the, <coughs> the, the monarchs. See the way they were kidnapping children and all that. 
So we are not sincerely pleased. What we are advocating for is we we'll be able to protect, provide for our people. We'll be able to go to farm and farm. That is what we know how to do. By myself, <clears throat> here in America, I bought a land. And I pick some people that I know they can they can do the, 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 they can do the job. They start the farming. Fulani has to go there and chase them away. Destroy everything with their cows. This has nothing to do with Tinubu or government or business. No. Let everybody go back to their spaces and develop and protect and have their culture. We are in Europe. A small city, a small country that, that not even up to 10,000 people. And they are doing well. Why are we deceiving ourselves? Why should you call us uh, a sensationalist? No, we are not. All we are saying is that we have the right to self-determination and we can protect ourselves and we can protect our land and we can be able to go to farm. Look, farming everywhere. There's problem everywhere. Come on, my sister. I love you. Stop. Don't call us sensationalist or whatever you call it maybe my my two nation or whatever ah kishe anything that jobaru ah me joba self-determination list in a we are campaigner of self-determination and we have the right to our own culture our own heritage our own land to govern ourselves We've done it before. And Yoruba land is a nation before now. Before Agui Rose come and destroy the Western region. Let everybody go back to their space. Look at that guy that is crying, that is shedding tears. It's all lie. I don't, I don't, I don't fear for him. I don't fear for him. She don't want to to Please, my sister. Ah, okay, she is sensational too. It 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 affect all my niya. Land ya fun. To buy that we have to listen. See what Angba is saying. Go jadi. Ile to shele kibama to shele. Anya nyami. E e bonko. E e listen. See video. Mude tun kwa dabo. Has surfaced showing Vice President Kashim Shatima bemoaning the level of poverty back in 2012 when he was the governor of Borno State. Shatima in the video narrated how a group of young boys broke the windshield of his friend's car, yelling expletives because they appeared affluent while the masses suffered. The incident that happened to my friend, his wife and driver, while driving through Kano City. And some young men came out and broke the windscreen of the car and told them in Hausa that bastards you are enjoying, we are suffering. And those young men did not run away. It was my friend's wife and driver that scampered away. And very soon, very soon, we reach that boiling point unless we wear our thinking caps and work for the people. And the most important yastic has to do with the quality of governance. There is more to leadership than primitive capital accumulation. No matter how much you skip beyond a certain point, it's just a number. The lifestyle of somebody with 20 million naira is virtually the same with the lifestyle of somebody with 100 million naira. Well, this was Kashim Shatima back in 2012, warning that very soon we'll reach that boiling point. Have we reached our boiling point? I'll ask you. Because a report by Global Rights and International Civil Society Organization revealed that since President Tinubu became president in June 2023, at least 2,423 Nigerians have been killed and no less than 1,872 people abducted in various attacks across the country. Well, Akin Rotimi, the spokesperson of the House of Representatives on Tuesday, burst into tears while debating the nation's insecurity on the floor of the Green Chamber. The lawmaker who represents Ikole Oye, federal constituency of Ekiti, was moving a motion concerning the killing of two monarchs in the state. January 29, 2024, 
This criminal has carried out a dastardly act, attack in the Okiako area. In Ikole local government area, resulting in the death of two traditional now, rulers. I have a solution for Tinubu. Egbon, Egbon, Kwanti Fala Nanso. Mousoni, Bouboukon, Boubou e Mimi, Ta Drua Gege Bi Woli, Mouvi Drua Ti, Bola Mbe Tinubu, Ewa Ma Kou Ma She, E Mi Ma Ekwe Kole Kou Kole Nou, Mou De Ma Ekwe Ole She, Shubba Ewa Toko Yira Ka O Tani Mo, Bayo Nanuga, Oh, Ni Da Ti Defend It Tinubu, No, Ebon, e jo e ma defend eni, e je ki e gban, ko she nitfu, e ma, e ma ma ronu 8 years. A wwa rabi ma ba e jo ba e je ma yin lo wako si, wwa ti wwa mbe te kpe. But agbara wwa lo wwa yin ba e. E ma wwa je ko bo si a shi lo agbara, ti mwa a ba ma gbe nyoro. Please, I beg of you. I beg of you, bola me tinubu. I beg of you, remi tinubu. Talk to e gban. Please. Our experience in fighting corruption that have to do that involve religious leaders and uh, even traditional rulers is nothing to write to me about. As I'm standing before you, there's a matter we are handling, a pyramid, pyramid scheme of over that involves over 30 billion naira fleeced from Nigerians. Along the lines some people die, some victims, you know, collapse and all of that. We were able to trace about seven, over seven billion to a particular religious body. I said, so what did I do? I said, look, write a letter to the leader of that religious sect. We did. And the next thing we saw was uh, a restraining order. The money traced to that religious organization to, to their leaders. We got a restraining order, stopping us from inviting them, stopping us from recovering the money. Meanwhile, you know people have died along the line. Money trade directly to your body, and that's what we are battling. Of course, we have we have appealed, and now this is this is the decision that is facing us, religious leaders, religious. Right, you heard the EFCC chairman, and some this is just a portion of what. And I trust that someone will share this video. It will get to them. God bless you. I want to share, and if you come on, and if you move me here. My name remains Baba Aropori, and I will say Ayokuribi. Bye, guys.